Good evening and welcome to Primetime News on TV1 for the News 15. My name is Rasan. Let's start off with a look at your headlines for tonight. Authorities decide against relaxing travel restrictions until the 7th of June. 5,000 rupee allowance to be doled out to low income earners. Has the rate of PCR testing reduced? Shipping agency did not notify of a nitric acid leak on board the Express Pearl vessel, says State Minister Nalaka Godeheva. Revealed to Parliament the government's plan of handing over prime properties in Colombo to investors through a special purpose vehicle, JVP urges. President Gotabe Rajapaksa has decided to refrain from relaxing the travel restrictions that have been imposed until the 7th of June. The President's Media Division said that this decision had been made during a meeting of the COVID-19 Prevention Committee at the Presidential Secretariat today. We cannot allow the people to leave their homes. They are not acting with responsibility. We saw it during the previous occasion as well. There are many vehicles on the streets today as well. The people must be responsible. We must observe whether this would be misused. Otherwise, we won't be able to benefit from these restrictions, which will be there for 16 days. They are displaying fake labels to travel. During the COVID-19 Prevention Committee meeting, the President had instructed to take the necessary steps to distribute essential goods among the people through mobile vendors and delivery services. The President's media division stated that the general public would be able only to leave their homes for essential services when the travel restrictions are in effect. It added that employees attached to essential service industries must produce a letter from their employer along with their service ID to travel to work. According to the President's Media Division, the President had issued instructions to administer the second dose of the Sinopharm vaccine from the 8th of June at the locations in which the first dose had been administered. The locations to carry out vaccination drives were chosen on a scientific basis. After choosing these areas, we explored how vaccination can be carried out and then collected data through the health units. However, we witnessed ugly scenes yesterday despite following this process. This destroyed the entire campaign. Don't allow such incidents to occur. We express our apologies. That was an unexpected incident. I am aware of that. Vaccination was taking place properly in other areas. When one bad thing happens, that gains publicity through the media. The Presidential Task Force on Economic Revival and Poverty Eradication convened at Temple Trees last evening and was chaired by Minister Namal Rajapaksa. The focal point of the meeting had been factors impacting the citizenry at present. The media unit of the task force said the task force had decided to open special economic centres on the 30th and 31st of this month for mobile vendors to purchase goods. Minister Rajapaksa had also announced that a special mechanism is in place to deliver essential goods through the district and divisional secretariats, adding that all divisional secretaries have been notified to operate mobile vendors of bakery items. Discussions had also been held to prioritize the inoculation of frontline workers and to allocate vaccines for this task. What will remain open when travel restrictions are in effect? Only pharmacies will be kept open while travel restrictions are in effect. Shops cannot be kept open. Public transport services will not operate as well. People can purchase medicine from their nearest pharmacy if required. No permission is required to travel to a hospital. One can travel in any vehicle for this purpose. We have allowed more delivery services to operate. We have issued instructions to allow mobile vendors to operate during this period. How can the public travel for essential services during this period? 
Employees providing essential services can travel to work during this period. However, since some people are misusing it, we decided that even those travelling for essential services should carry a letter signed by the head of their institution in addition to their service IDs. The letter can be a hard copy or one that is available on their smartphone. How will the 5,000 rupee allowance be distributed among the public? Pavatina Sancharna Sima Tulat, Janatava Mohanadena Gatalu, Pilibandavadani Mukarala. We have decided to recommence the distribution of 5,000 rupee allowance from the 2nd of June after considering the problems faced by the people when travel restrictions were imposed. If there are individuals receiving their allowances from the government and if it amounts to less than 5,000 rupees, we will take steps to provide the remaining amount up to 5,000 rupees. Low income earning individuals and people who have requested for various allowances will also receive the 5,000 rupee allowance and individuals and groups who have lost their modes of income will also receive this concession. What is the status of implementing travel restrictions? A special operation is underway to arrest individuals who flout quarantine regulations. One such operation took place with the use of drone cameras in the Vetumkada area in Kalutara. The assistance of the Rapid Deployment Motorcycle Squadron had been obtained for this purpose as well. Two individuals had been arrested for violating quarantine regulations during a special operation in Doranagoda, Gampaha. The police said that a firearm and T-56 ammunition had been recovered during the operation. It was later revealed that one of the arrested suspects had previously fled the Angunukola Palace prison. Meanwhile, the police conducted a special operation at the Totalanga Junction. According to our correspondent, drones were also used to apprehend individuals who had violated quarantine regulations. 829 individuals had been arrested during the last 24 hours for flouting quarantine laws. The highest number of arrests had been made in the Matale district, with the figure standing at 180. The mayor of Moratua, Samanlal Fernando, was remanded until the 11th of June on charges of obstructing the duties of state officers during a recent vaccination program. The mayor had been produced in court after he had surrendered to the police. The police launched an investigation into the incident in which the mayor of Moratua, Saman Lal Fernando, had obstructed the duties of a doctor and a team of medical officers during a vaccination program in Moratua. <laughs> According to the police, the investigations had been launched based on a complaint filed by health officials. Everyone must be given the vaccine in the country. We condemn the incident that had taken place in Moratua yesterday. It is not for politicians but for health officials to decide on who should receive the vaccine. We saw that a person who had been pushing a wheelbarrow without a mask was arrested recently. If that is the case, why wasn't the same action taken yesterday? Sri Lanka reported 2,243 new COVID-19 infections today, raising the total tally of infections in the country to 177,104. Official figures indicate that 2,573 individuals had recovered from the infection, bringing the total number of recoveries to 146,362. Meanwhile, the Health Ministry has said that 27,174 infected individuals are under medical care. 27 COVID-19 deaths were confirmed yesterday, among them which four deaths had occurred yesterday. The remaining 23 deaths had been reported from the 22nd to the 26th of May. Sri Lanka's death toll due to COVID-19 currently stands at 1,325. What is the status of the country's vaccination drive? 50,000 doses of the Russian Sputnik vaccine reached the country last evening. The batch of vaccines had been transported by trucks of the State Pharmaceuticals Corporation to its main storage facility in Colombo. Meanwhile, the Sinopharm vaccine was administered among the people in the Matara and Gol districts today. Will the second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine be administered? 
According to newspaper reports published today, India's Serum Institute has said that it will be able to supply AstraZeneca vaccines worth 15 US dollars each to Sri Lanka within two weeks. Sri Lanka had purchased the first dose of the jab at a cost of 5.50 US dollars a dose. What is the response of the Serum Institute? Issuing a statement, the Serum Institute said that it expects that vaccines can be given to the World Health Organization's COVAX facility and other countries by the end of this year. Meanwhile, details have surfaced on the intervention of the private sector to import AstraZeneca vaccines to the country. Requests have been made from private companies across the world to import vaccines to Sri Lanka. But on the 18th of May, the AstraZeneca vaccine had issued a strongly worded response to Sri Lanka. They had said the vaccines would be given only to governments and the World Health Organization. We must be ashamed that this government is asking the private sector to provide the vaccines. The AstraZeneca company has said that it will offer its vaccines only to governments and the WHO. It adds that the Covishield vaccine can be obtained through the WHO or the Serum Institute. They have also disputed the Covishield vaccines that have been brought by other entities. We must be ashamed of the reply that was sent by the AstraZeneca Institute to the chairman of the State Pharmaceuticals Corporation, Dr. Prasanna Gunasena. We must be ashamed that the government had elicited such a response from the AstraZeneca company. Who has sent this response? Who had asked for the vaccines from the private sector? We call on Prasanna Gunasena to respond to this immediately. He must bear responsibility for this, since it has come to a point up to which AstraZeneca has written to us, saying that they will not have local agents. Who asked for their local agents in the first place? As far as we know, it is a company belonging to an individual who owns a media institution who is involved in this and has brought down PCR test kits and is providing gym equipment to the sports ministry. The State Pharmaceuticals Corporation has said that certain private companies had said that they would be able to provide the AstraZeneca vaccine. A senior official of the State Pharmaceuticals Corporation confirmed that the chairman of the SPC had made inquiries from UK's AstraZeneca company on whether the private sector can supply the vaccines. Have COVID-19 infections reduced? The government wants to indicate that the daily toll of infections that stood above 3,500 has now reduced to about 2,000 or 2,200. They are trying to do this by reducing the rate of PCR tests. On the 20th of May, the Health Ministry had said that 25,713 PCR tests had been conducted. This figure had reduced to 22,824 by the 22nd of May. By the 24th, this had reduced to 17,000. On the 27th, only 18,156 PCR tests had been conducted. That is why the infections that are detected have been reduced to about 2,200. The percentage of infections hasn't reduced, but the government is trying to say that the number of infections has reduced. There are large-scale PCR testing machines in certain laboratories. When some machines start malfunctioning, we send the samples to another location as a temporary measure. The numbers keep fluctuating due to various reasons. We are trying to ensure that laboratories remain functioning at its full capacity. Now the Janata Vimukti Perumuna has revealed moves that are underway to vest ancient buildings and valuable lands in Colombo under one authority and to sell them under the guise of investments. Former parliamentarian Sunil Handuneti pointed out that the government must immediately inform parliament on the state authority named Selendiva that had been set up recently. Yesterday, news first revealed details of how an entity named Selendiva Investments Limited had been established with its ownership being held 100% with the Treasury. A special purpose vehicle had been created under this company for investments. Cabinet approval has been granted for this exercise, under which multiple properties in Colombo and its suburbs will be brought under the special purpose vehicle entity that will fall under the company. The properties classified as the Colombo Fort Heritage Square Investment Portfolio include the Grand Oriental Hotel and York Building, Gafur Building, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Postal Department Head Office. 
Meanwhile, the Sino restaurant along DR Vijayawardenamawata, the mega mixed development project of the Water's Edge Hotel and the International Coordination Centre in Kankasanture in Jaffna are classified as the immovable property development investment portfolio. Further, the Hilton Colombo and Grand Hyatt are also to be brought under the SPV and will be given away to investors. The cabinet paper clearly indicates that the Rajapaksa administration is acting as a company that sells public assets and is preparing an environment conducive to give away these properties. They are cheating the country, its people and the parliament. The proposal approved by the cabinet paves the way for agreements and companies to which these public assets can be given away. We know that incidents of this nature took place in the past as well. The Maganagum entity was established under the Road Development Authority in the past. The Rajapaksa administration had set up several similar entities in the past as well. The law wasn't enforced against them. Those entities were not responsible to the parliament or the COP. At the same time, they set up private entities under the Ceylon Electricity Board as well. Today, the CEB is running at a loss as a result of these companies. This allows valuable land areas in the country to be given away to foreign entities. On the 5th of May, a cabinet paper had been submitted seeking to clear a land area spanning 42 acres. They portray the Selendiva entity that is completely owned by the Treasury. But they set up SPVs under that and then paved the way to sell off these assets. Ultimately, we know that it is the henchmen of the government and the thieves who will be the owners of these properties. We wish to stress that this destroys the right of a government. They are trying to sell land area in Colombo, just as they are doing to land area in other parts of the country. Fifth of May, 2021, Prime Minister tables cabinet proposal on drawing investments towards valuable properties in Colombo and its suburbs through the Selendiva entity. 17th of May 2021, Cabinet approves the Prime Minister's proposal. 20th of May 2021, Colombo Port City Economic Commission Bill passed in Parliament. 24th of May 2021, Cabinet green lights proposal to West Tenders for the construction of the entry road to the Colombo Port and the expressway from the Kalanir Bridge to the Aturugiriya Interchange to a Chinese company. According to this decision, China Harbour Engineering Corporation will be allowed to run these projects for 15 years for your attention. It has been eight days since the fire erupted on board the Express Pearl vessel which was anchored in the outer harbour of the Colombo port. Although the blaze has been largely controlled, minor flames have been observed on board the vessel. Chemicals and other material which were on board the vessel have begun washing ashore, causing severe environmental damages. This is the sad predicament which has currently befallen the pristine western coastline of Sri Lanka, renowned the world over and also a tourist hotspot. Personnel of the Sri Lanka Navy and Coast Guard donning personal protective equipment are engaged in a relentless effort to clear the beach of debris. Disregarding the threat to their own lives, especially when a pandemic is gripping the nation, these spirited personnel are toiling hard to preserve and restore our coastline to its former glory. Many areas in the west coast of Sri Lanka, including Vallavatta, Bambalapitiya, Pamunugama, Nigambo, Beruala and Alukkama have been detrimentally affected through the chemicals and other substances which have fallen overboard from the vessel. On one hand, acid will cause coral reefs to melt. Marine ecosystems in the area have already been destroyed. Aquatic animals will ingest plastic pellets which are floating in the sea. That will cause the destruction of marine life. The vessel has caused a catastrophe. The government should have known the contents of the vessel. The government officials should ascertain the contents of a vessel before permitting it to enter territorial waters and dock in a harbour. We can see two types here. They are seagulls with a lifespan of around 15 years. Seabirds such as this one would mistake toxic oils as fish oils and ingest it, causing liver damage and damage to their feathers. They will then sink and die. Toxic oils 
අතර වෙනස ඒ සත්තු දන්නේ නැහැ. ඒක කෑවොත් ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ ලිවර් ඩැමේජ්, ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ මේ පිහාටු වල තෙල් ගෑව නැතිනම් ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ මේ තියෙන අර මේ හයිඩ්‍රෝෆෝබික් ගතිය නැති වෙනවා. එතකොට ඒගොල්ලන් ගිලිලා මැරෙනවා. Officials including those from the Central Environment Authority are currently assessing the severity of the damage dealt to the coastline. දැනට මේ අපිට මෙතන දකින්නම් virgin plastic pellets have washed ashore. Those have spread across a large area. A monitoring plan is currently in place to remove these pellets and discard them in eco-friendly manner. We only commenced our operations today. This will bear far-reaching environmental consequences because in essence this is plastic. ඊට පස්සේ අවසාන බැහැරලීම සඳහා යොමු කරන එක තමයි මැදින් පරිසර අධිකාරි කාර්යභාරය වෙන්නේ මේ වෙලාවේ. ඇත්තටම මේ ලොකු පරිසරික බලපෑමක් මොකද මේ තියෙන්නේ plastic. What is the status of the vessel at present? A fire broke out on board the Express Pearl vessel on the 20th of this month while it was anchored in the outer harbor of the Colombo port. It is currently floating 9.5 nautical miles northwest of the Colombo port. Although the fire has been controlled to a large extent, the vessel has been completely destroyed. Most of the damage has been caused to the rear of the vessel. Although there is smoke emitting from other parts, we did not observe fires. However, depending on wind speeds, we can observe sparks from certain areas. We are attempting to control the fire completely with the support of the salvos who have arrived from the Netherlands. Further, there was a risk of the vessel shattering, resulting in an oil leakage. Therefore, we sought assistance from the Indian Navy and requested for two vessels. Those vessels are equipped to control an oil spill should it occur. The blaze has been controlled to a large extent. There is no risk of the vessel shattering at present. Was there an act of negligence leading up to the disaster? The Express Pearl had sailed to the outer harbor of the Colombo port from the Hazira port in India on the 19th of May. On the 20th of May, the vessel had notified the Colombo port of smoke emitting from its containers. Speaking at a media briefing held today, State Minister Nalika Gudeheva said the matter had been notified via an email. However, reports have already surfaced to confirm the Hazira port in India and the Hamad port in Qatar had knowledge of a nitric acid leak from a container on board the vessel. The director of MTI Network, which represents the operators of the vessel, Andrew Leahy, responding to a query put forth by News First, confirmed the matter. Quote, Applications had been made to both ports to offload a container that was leaking nitric acid, but the advice given was there was no specialist facilities or expertise immediately available to deal with the leaking acid. Unquote. There may never Colombo arrived at Tulu in the culling. May Anaturdai at Apigana, Apiva, the Nuat Grad, Lanka, but in the cult. They had not notified this matter to a control room prior to it entering. Information of the leak was notified on the morning of the 20th. 10 hours after it anchored in the outer harbour. That too was notified via an email. They requested support from the Sri Lanka Ports Authority at around 2 p.m. To answer your question, our authorities had not been notified of this prior to dropping anchor. the law will certainly be enacted we cannot initiate legal action amidst the fire that is erupting it takes time like we said earlier the investigation has not concluded we have not completely controlled the fire either when inquired from the local agent of the vessel a senior official of the company said there is no requirement to address the media on the matter he added necessary authorities have been notified of the situation News First later inquired from Singapore as to whether the competent authorities had failed to declare the risks this vessel possessed prior to anchoring at the Colombo port. I understand that I've received a numerous uh, applications for that and we're looking into it now. We will be updating the statement later today and we will be um, updating the incident site which has right. our statements on it. And if you're on my list, then I'll send a statement out. At this stage, we're still looking into those comments. However, 
a severe blow has already been dealt to many sensitive marine ecosystems through this disaster. The vessel had sailed to multiple ports including the Jabal Ali port in Dubai, Hamad port in Qatar and Hazira port in India. Data has already confirmed that the crew had identified the acid leak while the vessel was sailing on the Arab Sea. Shouldn't an entity be held accountable for packing a container bearing acid in a substandard manner, subsequently leading to a leak? Didn't authorities in India, Qatar and Dubai bear a responsibility to assist in avoiding a potential disaster? Shouldn't a portion of the responsibility fall on these ports for failing to act in accordance with international trade and shipping procedures which were aware of the potential risk prior to the vessel sailing to the Colombo port? Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa has called on the government to conduct an impartial investigation into the environmental impact caused as a result of the fire on board the Express Pearl vessel. Issuing a statement, the opposition leader pointed out that foreign media reports have shown that the vessel had been refused entry to ports in Qatar and India due to an acid leak. He emphasized that the vessel's entry into Sri Lankan waters against such a backdrop is not a normal occurrence. The opposition leader questioned the government's silence on the entry of the vessel into Sri Lankan waters, given that it has constantly been highlighting the importance of national security. Arrangements are underway to provide relief to low-income earning individuals amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. However, a group of people in Mahiangani have complained that they are yet to receive the handout. The Migahahena Uskalapitiya village is located in the Mahiangane Divisional Secretariat. The primary source of income of the majority of villagers is farming, while some are daily wage labourers. The current COVID-19 pandemic has seen the standard of living of these people going from bad to worse. There was nothing to eat. There is nothing in the kitchen to survive. We only had some jackfruit yesterday. 5,000 is a lot for us. There is nothing to eat or drink. It would be great to receive the Samurthi funds at a time like this. Although many people in the village are entitled to Samurthi funds, the villagers say that they have not received it within three months. These villagers who have no money and cannot afford to buy anything live on bitter fruits that are found freely. The people of Uskalapitiya village in Migahena, Mahiangane, are simply requesting the Samurthi funds they deserve. Nothing more. Residents of Karwalagahavela in Bibila allege that lands in the area have been fraudulently acquired under the pretext of restoring the Alavatta Kumbura Vava in Bibila. The Alavatta Kumbura Vava is being restored under the Vari Saubage program. The government has acquired nine acres of land under this restoration program. Our correspondent reported that the government has acquired those lands by compensating five families in the area. The restoration of the Alavatta Kumbura Vava is expected to supply water for nearly 200 families in the area. But farmers allege that certain factions are trying to use the soil from the Vava to set up paddy fields. <laughs> The only problem is that the officials don't act promptly on these issues. They seek something additionally to open their eyes and act. We are frustrated by the lackadaisical attitude of the officials. This is a crime. No official came to observe the restoration of the Vava. Not even the chairman of the agrarian organization or the district secretary came and inquired into its progress. We only have one plea. Remove these piles of soil and leave the weather as it was. There is no point in restoring this weather in this manner. The prior condition of the weather was better than. They claim that this weather comprised 9 acres. But you can see for yourself that the weather does not cover an area of over 2.5 acres. They don't want to remove this paddy field. But now they have put up new paddy fields even below this initial paddy field. This paddy field is a land acquired by the government. 
What else do they need to clarify? Nobody is taking up the responsibility for this. This is the truth. The government even paid compensation for this land. How can they put up paddy fields on these lands? The Bibile Divisional Secretary also visited the village to look into the issue. The farmers strongly opposed the arrival of the Divisional Secretary. This vava was destroyed under the vistas of prosperity and splendor. If this is how it is done, who else can we seek help from? The UN Human Rights Council adopted a resolution to investigate violence in the recent conflict between Israeli and Palestine during a special session yesterday. The resolution brought by a group of Islamic countries was passed with 24 votes during a special session of the United Nations Human Rights Council yesterday. This would see the establishment of a special commission of inquiry appointed by the President of the Human Rights Council to probe alleged violations of human rights during the Israel-Palestine conflict. The resolution also requests the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights to provide an oral update on the process of implementing the resolution at the 48 UNHRC sessions. Nine countries, Austria, Bulgaria, Czech Republic, Germany, Malawi, Marshall Islands, the United Kingdom and Uruguay had voted against this resolution. However, eight of these countries had voted for the resolution seeking to probe the human rights abuses in Sri Lanka at the 46th Human Rights Session. Sri Lanka deeply regrets that the latest outbreak of violent hostilities caused wanton loss of many civilian lives including of children, injured and displaced thousands and destroyed vital civilian infrastructure. We support diplomatic efforts to find a lasting solution to the conflict and request both parties to engage in a dialogue to achieve durable peace. We recognize the legitimate and inalienable right of the Palestinian people to stay tuned and to the natural resources in their territory. And that's a wrap of this edition of Primetime News. For the News for Steam, I am Azra Hassan with our sign language interpreter Tarika Gabriel. We leave you tonight with the ever-famous quote of former Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad. Stay safe and good night. Comes with a lot of money and says you can borrow this money, but you must think, how do I repay? Some countries see only the project and not the payment part of it. That's how they lose chunks of their country. We do not want that.